Hello boys and girls, it's lovely to be with you again after what's been a very long, long summer holiday. I hope that you're settling in well at school and I'm sure you're excited to be with all your friends again. School might be a bit different for a while, but different is good. I have something to show you today. Uh, I wonder if you can guess what it is. It's wrapped up in lots of tissue paper in this lovely box. Can you see that? I wonder if you know what it is. Well, I'm going to tell you. It is a baptismal cup or a christening cup. And we use this in the church uh, when someone is being baptised, when someone is being welcomed into the church. And sometimes that can be a wee baby or sometimes um, an adult. And what we will do, uh, we'll pour the water into the baptismal font from the cup. Uh, and of course, uh, this is... Uh, very precious to us so we keep it um, under lock and key and wrapped away and we'll bring it out when there is a baptism in the church and not only is it precious to us in a sentimental way it's actually made of silver and gold and it has a wee label with it um, here and it says silver christening beaker fine silver 24 carat gold doesn't tell you what the value is in money uh, but for us that's not really important because we um, find it it's priceless it's precious because when we see that on a baptismal day we remember all the people who have been welcomed into our church uh, in the past and so this is priceless it's unique it's quite special and so we take great care of it I wonder if you have something in your house that's priceless, that's precious, and perhaps um, an old vase or some jewellery or maybe a painting, and um, you wrap it up and keep it safe. Uh, perhaps you're not even allowed to touch it because it's so precious, it's priceless to you. So I wonder what the most valuable thing is in your house. I wonder what the most valuable thing is in your classroom. I wonder what the most valuable thing is in your school. Do you know that a few years ago, scientists worked out the value of a human body? When they took all your organs out, and your, your heart and your lungs and your brain, and worked out how much your body would be worth. And I wonder if you can guess how, more, how much your body is worth. I'm going to tell you. 35 million pounds. That's what your body is worth. But then the same scientists decided that they, they would think about how much, how valuable the body is uh, without the organs. Now, they discovered obviously that the body, your body, is made up mainly of water. And of course, we don't think that water is that valuable. So they worked out that the human body without all the organs, your brain and your heart and your lungs, was worth. Only £122. So that's much different from £35 million, isn't it? So what do you think? Would you rather be worth £35 million or would you rather be worth £122? Well, I know how much you're worth and I'm going to tell you how much you are really worth. You are priceless. You know why you're priceless? Because you are unique. There's not ever been one of you before. And there's only one of you now. And in the future, there won't be another person exactly like you so you're unique, you're valuable, you are priceless. You are the most valuable thing in your house. You are the most valuable thing in your classroom. You are the most valuable thing in your school. And that goes for the person sitting next to you. 
We are all unique individuals, priceless and precious. And that's how we should treat each other. Sadly, we don't always treat each other as if we're precious and priceless. We don't always recognise people's worth and their value. Sometimes we think certain people are of more value than others. For instance, if people have a lot of money or they have a good job or a fancy car or maybe because of the way they speak or the way they look, we treat them differently as if they are more special than others. And that can't be right, can it? Can you imagine what the world would, be look, would look like if we all believed that we were precious and that other people were precious and priceless too? I think the world would be a happier place. Now, a way back in the time of Jesus, uh, people didn't always treat each other as valuable. In the time of Jesus, for instance, if you were ill, if you maybe could not walk or you could not see or you could not hear, then you were treated differently. People didn't think that you were as valuable as healthy people. And that can't be right, can it? And way back in Jesus' time, men were thought to be more valuable than women and children. Now that can't be right either, can it? Rich and powerful people were respected, while the poor and those who didn't have very much power uh, were looked down upon and ignored. And there's lots of stories in the Bible where Jesus uh, he healed people and he, he included people and he spoke to people, uh, people whom other people might not bother about. They would think that they were not worth, worth bothering about, but not for Jesus. Jesus treated them as if they were valuable, as if they were priceless. And Jesus came to teach that all people are created in the image of God. Whether you're a man or a woman or a girl or a boy, no matter what language you speak or how much money you have or what you look like or what colour your skin is, you are priceless because you bear the likeness of God. You are made in the image of God. And so one of the most important things that Jesus teaches us is to love our neighbour. No matter who our neighbour is, we have to see them as priceless, that they are valuable. So I have some questions for you today, some questions for you to think about. How does it make you feel to know how precious you are? How can we make other people feel precious? And what will you do today? To make someone else feel as if they're priceless and precious. Until next time, stay safe. Remember, you are precious. God bless.